Welcome to section 7.2 day two, division properties of exponents. Today we'll be doing the same thing we did in 7.2 day one, except for now we're gonna make the problems a little more difficult. So our objectives again are to divide powers with the same base and to raise a quotient to a power. So here we have four problems. It says to simplify, we have x to the fifth, y to the zero over x cubed. Since we have both x to the numerator and denominator, we would have x to the five minus three, subtracting the exponents. And y to the zero just goes to one. Anything raised to the zero power, remember from yesterday, goes to one. This just becomes x squared. For the next one, we have five r squared t to the fourth over 20 r cubed t to the seventh, u to the negative fifth. So what we're gonna do is any of the same base, we're gonna subtract the exponents. Any negative exponents we have at the beginning, we can move around. We have five over 20, and you can cancel this out because five goes into 24 times. So now we have four in the denominator. We have r squared, and we have r cubed in the bottom, so two minus three for our exponents. We have t to the fourth in the numerator. We have t to the seventh in the bottom in the denominator, so subtract seven for the exponent. And we still have u to the negative fifth in the denominator. This is going to become r to the negative first, t to the negative third, all over four, u to the negative fifth. We've simplified all our bases. We've subtracted our exponents. Now we're gonna move all our negative exponents around. So since r is the negative the first power, we're gonna move it to the denominator. The four stays put in the denominators. We have four r. The first power is just to the first. Now we got rid of the negative, we can just leave it as four r. Um, we have t to the negative third power in the numerator, so it has to move down below. So we have t cubed in the denominator. And we have u to the negative fifth in the denominator, it must move to the numerator, and we get u to the fifth. This is my simplified form. u to the fifth over four r t cubed. So for the next one, we talked about one like this yesterday. I'm gonna show you what I did yesterday where I brought this power into the whole numerator and then distributed it through and we're gonna bring it to the denominator. So we have three x to the fourth all cubed over four cubed. And then we need to bring that, that uh, power of three into both pieces of the top. In our numerators we have three cubed. X to the fourth cubed is, we multiply the exponents, we get X to the 12th. And we have four cubed in the denominator. Now we're gonna take our three cubed, which is 27. X to the 12th stays the same. And four cubed is 64. This is my simplified form. Do the same thing with the one on the right. Number four, we're gonna bring this into the numerator. We're gonna bring it into the denominator. We get four X cubed all squared over five Y to the fourth all squared. We're gonna bring that two into everything, each part. So we have four squared X to the six because three times two is six over five squared and Y to the eighth because four times two is eight. And four squared is 16. We have x to the sixth. And we have 25 y to the eighth in our denominator. We cannot simplify between the numerator and denominator because we do not have any like variables between the numerator and denominator and 16 over 25 does not simplify. These ones get a little bit more complicated because of our negative exponents. Here again, we're just simplifying, and I'm gonna show you all the different pieces of this. Um, we have five r to the negative third, t to the fourth, all over negative 20 r squared t to the third. What we're gonna do first is I have coefficients that I can simplify, I have a five and a negative 20. Well, five goes into five one time, five goes into negative 20, negative four times. So I'm just gonna rewrite this now because our numerator now has a negative four in it. And I'm going to use the division property and I'm gonna subtract off my 
exponents that have the same bases. So I have the same base of r. We have negative 3 on the numerator, and we have a 2 on the bottom, so we have to subtract it off. So r to the negative 3 minus 2. Then we have t. The numerator has 4. Subtract out the exponent from the bottom, and we have minus 3. So now we have r to the negative fifth, t to the first, 4 minus 3 is t to, 4 minus 3 is 1, so we have t to the first, which is t, and we still have this negative 4. We're going to move our negative exponent down into the denominator. So we have r to the fifth, our t stays put, and we have this negative sign down below in our denominator with the 4. We can't forget the four, and we need to bring that negative sign either out front or up top. I'm gonna to bring it out front. And so my answer, my simplified form, is negative t over four r to the fifth. It is very tricky sometimes with these exponents when we have negatives, so be careful with them. I recommend, and you should, write everything out so you do not make mistakes with your signs on your exponents like I'm showing here. This is what I should be seeing. So for number two, we have two over 10. Two goes into two one time, two goes into 10 five times. So we have five in our denominator. We have a squared in the top. We have a to the negative third, same base, subtract the exponents. This is why I say you have to be careful. We have two minus a negative three. We have b to the third in the numerator. We have b to the negative first in the denominator, so we have three minus a minus one. And then we have c to the negative fifth in the numerator, and we have minus a minus four. All right, so we have a is two minus minus three, which becomes a to the, because minus minus becomes plus. We have three minus minus, which becomes three plus one. So we have b to the fourth. We have negative five minus minus four, which is negative five plus four. So c to the negative first, all over five. And then we have to look to see if we have any negative exponents before we say we're done. And we have c to the negative first power. So we must move it to the denominator. And when we do this, we get a to the fifth b to the fourth, all over 5c. And this is my simplified form. There is another way you can do this if you want to, but I think it's a little bit more difficult. You can move your negative exponents around first. Um, that's another way to look at this, where you bring the a to the negative third to the top, then you have a to the a squared times a to the third, and you can add the exponents. It's another way to do these is move the negative exponents first and then combine. It is your choice, but I need to see something that you're doing to see how you're coming to your final conclusion, your final solution. All right, so number three, we have three X to the fourth Y cubed over four X squared Y to the negative second, all raised to the third power. What I recommend is if you have something like this, you do our order of operations. We have a grouping symbol, Let's simplify what's inside the parentheses first and then bring that power of three outside the parentheses in. So we have three over four, which we can't do anything with. They don't simplify any. But we have x to the fourth over x squared. So we have x to the four minus two. We have y cubed over y to the negative second. So we have y cubed minus minus two. This is all raised to the third power. I'm gonna simplify some more. We have three. The numerator still has, the denominator still has four in it. X to the four minus two is X squared. We have three minus minus two, which is three plus two. So we get Y to the fifth. And this is all still raised to the third power. Now I'll bring our power of three into everything. If we bring the power of three into everything, we're gonna bring it to the three, the x squared, the y to the fifth, and to the four. We get three cubed, x to the two times three, which is six, 
y to the 5 times 3, which is 15, all over 4 cubed. And then we're going to take 3 and cube it, take the 4 and cube it, and we get 27, x to the 6th, y to the 15th, all over 64. And this is my simplified answer. So if you ever run into this where you have things in the parentheses raised to a power, if you can simplify what's inside the parentheses, I recommend you do that first. It does make it a little bit easier, I think. But again, show me what you're doing, show me your work. Do not just show up with that last part that I've blocked in as your answer without showing me how you got there. That is all for 7.2 day two. We're doing some more division properties of exponents. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.